Hey, this is Neighbor Getsy, and bringing you some of the best comics that you might not know yet, but you're about to get to know them. It's a nice crowd. Uh, let's get into it. How many people, anybody married over 10 years? 10 years? Over 20? 30? Mm. Gets a little harder to clap at that, that point. 30 years, how long? 43 years. It's amazing. That is amazing. I, uh, I was watching Dateline. It was a couple that were uh, happily married for 40 years. And she stabbed him in the face. Which is crazy, right? I don't know. Anyways, congratulations <laughs> on uh, 40 years. Sure, you don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> it is rough, man. I'm married. Uh, me and my wife have been married going on 14 years. Um, and uh, uh, thank you. You learn stuff about people when you're you together that long, you know? I learned about my wife. I, I found out my wife is a bad surpriser, you know? Because like a good surpriser, you get people stuff they want. You don't get, you know what I mean? You don't get people stuff you think they need, you know? Like you're like, hey baby, I got a trip to Tahiti coming up. That's a surprise, you know? Got you a PS5. That's a good surprise, you know? My wife got me three sessions uh, to get my colon clean. Now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, not sure what you know about colon cleaning, but it's, it's a lot more aggressive than it sounds. <laughs> I didn't even know how they clean your colon. I, uh, I thought they just gave you an IV. So I was like, oh, I don't like needles, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine my confusion <laughs> when the nurse told me to lay on my side in a fetal position. When she told me to pull my underwear down, she started pulling it down. I, uh, I had to tell her, ma'am, I, uh, I don't know what it looks like back there. But I don't think you're gonna find a vein. I'm um, pretty sure. <laughs> Man, me and my wife, we... You know, we made it through the pandemic, man. Any couples that made it through the pandemic, I salute you. That is not easy, you know? You with somebody, because you remember at the beginning of the pandemic how positive we were? <laughs> it was like, maybe this is God's way <laughs> of saying we need to be around the people that we love. <laughs> Two hours later, I was like, I gotta get out of here. I'm about to, I'm about to murder somebody in here. Said divorce was up. 30% during the uh, pandemic. My wife saw that and she was like, that seems a little high. I was like, that ain't high enough. Because <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't care how long you've been with somebody, how much you love them. At some point during the pandemic, you hated them, you know? <laughs> I knew my wife hated me when she told me I breathed too much. I didn't even, <laughs> you know? You know how you feel somebody looking at you out the side of your eye? I looked at her, she was just looking at me like, like, oh. I was like, what? She was like, why you breathe so much? I was like, I don't know, I'm trying not to die. What do you do? You know? It's a lot going on during that pandemic, man. I ended up being a teacher during, the whole, during that whole pandemic. I had to homeschool, anybody have to do that? Oh, that was the worst. That was the worst. I, I did not go to school for this. You know? And that, look, I found out that teachers do not make enough money. They are not paid enough. You gotta, yeah. I didn't believe that at first, because before the pandemic, you know, I was like, uh, I don't understand what they're complaining about. They got the whole summer, you know? Because like, right before the pandemic, we had a parent-teacher conference with my son's teacher, and she said, sometimes in class, Michael does not listen. 
And I said, that's ridiculous. He listens to his mom and me all the time. She just, she's not working hard enough. I felt like that. And then I had to homeschool. And then I had to call and apologize. I was like, yo, you need to come get him because he don't listen to nothing I say. I don't know how you deal with this. It was a lot on TV, too, during the pandemic, right? I saw this one thing that was, was crazy. This, this guy needed a kidney transplant, right? But he couldn't find a donor anywhere. Nobody was a match. None of his family, none of his friends. Finally, at the last minute, he found out that his wife was a perfect match. She gave him a kidney, and he's doing great. Me and my wife saw that like, that is amazing. Then my wife said, I hope nothing like that ever happens to you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, she was cool. She was like, I hope nothing like that happens to you. But if it does, I pray that I can be the one to give you a kidney. I know, I was like, that's sweet, but I would rather die. <laughs> that was our worst nightmare, fellas, to have your woman give you a vital organ. You think you got to hear her mouth now? <laughs> Let her give you a kidney. Soon as she walk in the house, she's going to be talking crazy. You know what? You didn't even wash the dishes. Oh, my God. You know what? You don't appreciate nothing I do. <laughs> you ain't nothing. Your kidneys ain't nothing. <laughs> and I gave you one of my kidneys, and this is how you act. You know what? Just give my kidney back, because you don't know how to act right. <laughs> we watched a lot of stuff. Started rewatching some of my favorite shows, like Game of Thrones is one of my favorite shows. And uh, my wife had never seen that, so I thought this was something we could watch together. So we started watching, having a good time, I thought, until she said something that made me question our relationship. Uh, if you've never seen this show, it's an episode where this woman has three dragon eggs. Three dragon eggs, and she walks in a fire. And the next morning, the fire's out, she's not burnt, three dragon eggs have hatched, three dragons are walking around. My wife, I should tell you, is also the mother of my kids. <laughs> Looked at me with a straight face. She was like, man, that's fake. <laughs> I said, what tipped you off? You know? <laughs> she was serious. She was like, how is she going to walk in a fire and not get burned? I said, wait, 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 hold on. That's the part that messed you up? You ain't see all these dragons flying? You need to pay attention, girl. We got kids, man. <laughs> we got kids, man. You gotta pay attention to that. We got, we got two. We got a 12-year-old son and a nine-year-old daughter. They're in school, and I'm gonna be honest, uh, with them being in school makes me a little nervous. You know? I, I hated school, because I got picked on a lot when I was in school. I don't want my kids dealing with that, you know? I was an awkward-looking kid coming up, just so you know. It was like real skinny. I had these real thick glasses. I used to hear I was ugly constantly, you yeah. know. Seventh grade was the absolute worst, no. This is the worst. I actually heard this. I heard, you know, if you wasn't so skinny and if you didn't have those glasses on, and if you wasn't so ugly, you could be my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's messed up. Okay, appreciate it. <laughs> like, I'm gonna laugh at this trauma, huh? That still bothers me to this day, man. It does, man. I'm gonna tell you why it still bothers me, all right? It's because the dude that said it to me. <laughs> was a teacher, and I really don't feel like that's. Like he's supposed to be building me up, not tearing me down, sir. Hey, thank y'all so much. I'm Mike James. <laughs>